First time caller. I yeah. just wanted to say to um, Cormier, like, yo, at the end of the day, he left the ring crying. Like, yo, what's up with that? The crazy thing is that it was allowed to happen. They just completely got away with doing one of the dirtiest things I've seen in sports. John Jones! For the winner, by unanimous decision, Daniel D.C. And what, why are they booing uh, Cormier? I, I just, I, I, it really this. drives me nuts. Your boy DC, I saw. Terrible. What? Terrible. What? How are you gonna give up away and then fight like a? F- so when they're booing in there, it's fine. It just bounces off of me. Boo me, yes, that makes a lot of sense. But uh. <laughs> Justify the fact that he's a champion. Eddie crying like a bitch. <sighs> they can't believe it. I want to make fun of a guy who's literally putting his health on the line in a in an occupation where you're competing against a motherfucking trained killer. You gotta have some respect. Have you ever wondered like why do I love violence so much? As a kid, you know, I grew up in Lafayette, Louisiana. We, we didn't have anything. When you were seven, you lost your dad. Your biological yeah, I did, father. Man, yeah. I see your pendant too. Um, your mom and these your are daughter. my parents. Yeah. Right. These are, so this is my uh, this is my stepfather. He raised me, man. My biological dad left. He got remarried. Started a new family. I have one memory of my my biological father. Just one, and it's the oddest memory that I. We were at a truck stop. I think he was a, a truck driver, and we were at a truck stop one day, and he was like cleaning his truck. But that's the only memory I have of my, my, my biological dad. But I do remember the day he passed away. I remember being at my aunt's house, and we were watching The Color Purple. And um, I just remember my mom getting a phone call, and everybody just going absolutely crazy. Crazy. He got killed, man, murdered by his, his new father-in-law on Thanksgiving Day. And I was I, I couldn't really understand what, what was going on. And I just remember like going to a funeral for my dad, but not really having that relationship and understanding of what losing my, my dad was. I think growing older, I then started to realize what a father was supposed to be in your life. And I understand that he wasn't that. That's why my, my dad, Percy Benoit, the one that's on my chest here, showed me what it is to be a father. When I was younger, we were on uh, government assistance. My mom, you know, she didn't want to do that anymore. She wanted to try and make a way herself, her and my dad, and they did. She did house cleaning. My dad was working for the city of Lafayette every morning from 8 o'clock till 5 o'clock. Coming home, he would bathe, eat dinner and leave, and go and wash dishes at a pizza parlor. And if he wasn't at a pizza parlor, he was cutting the cemetery. He was always working. So I had two very hardworking parents. And you said you got beat up a lot as a kid? Man, it was rough. This one kid used to just mess with me all the time. His name is Gilbert. He would beat me every chance he got. Almost every class picture, I'm gone because my mom wouldn't let me go because I had some sort of knot or like I had something from playing in the yard or just getting hit. Like they would have random kids playing basketball. Kids would get into fights or whatever. I, I would watch, just like everybody else. I want to enjoy the fight. We are we are drawn to that. So I would watch kids fight. And if I was watching the fight, kids saw, oh, there's a ruckus. I guess I'm gonna go over there and kick Daniel's ass. Why not? You know, there's already one fight. So he beats me up. I run, go to my house, you know, cry a little bit, get over it, knowing that when I go back to school the next day, he probably gonna beat me again. Right? But that's just what he did. I wouldn't fight the kid. Like I had something that was like a block. Like I could not allow myself to stand up to this kid. I was beaten, I was bruised, I was battered. I did not think I could beat him. I had no confidence when it came to him. One day me and my friend PJ, my cousin, we were kicking a football tee. At a point, he got tired of retrieving, and he stood up for himself. He's like, I'm not going to get the ball again. So then him and I started fighting. And the uh, high school wrestling coach was leaving, pulled over, and he goes, what are you guys doing? You know, he stopped us from fighting, and uh, he started talking to us about wrestling. That's pretty much how I started wrestling. Like, you know, if I didn't learn to fight, I was just going to get beat up all the time. One of the happiest days of my life, Gilbert came over, and 
he was going to kick my ass again for the <laughs> <laughs> he was going the kid's like 99 and 1 against me in my entire life you know he was coming to kick my ass for the hundredth time he just didn't know that i had learned to wrestle so as soon as he went to get me, I took his ass down, put him in a half Nelson. He's like flopping around on his belly like, what is going on here? I was like, you see, this is your life now if you try to kick my ass again. It saved me for like the last two years of middle school wrestling saved me. Because every time someone would try to get me, I would actually take him down and then I would beat him up. And then they stopped. They just left me alone. And from like that day, I was like, no one's bullying me because I can stand up for myself. It makes me a little bit aggressive. Like, if I feel like someone's trying to bully me, I always, like, go after them. You know, that was, like, something I developed as a, a defense mechanism. Instead of worrying about the grades, I was chasing girls. I was wanting to hang out. I was doing all the things that we all did as high school kids. And when it came time to go to school, I didn't have the grades. So I had to go to junior college. So I chose to go to Kobe, Kansas. They had 4,000 people in the whole city, bro. So I was sitting there like, what else am I going to do out here but train? I was in college as a freshman. I actually failed off the team. I got in a fight. I tried a lot of the cops. They were like, man, that is not true. Come to jail. And that's when I realized how much it meant to me. Wrestling was, especially in Louisiana, the best kids were the private school kids. So they kind of had money. My mom bought me a pair of shoes from Academy Sports. Fortunately, they only had purple shoes. They made fun of me. They was messing with me the whole time, but I was the best one. So when I start winning and winning and winning, that's how I got their respect. And then I did some stuff that nobody did because Louisiana has no wrestling. Like you said, we're good in baseball, we're good in basketball, we're good in football. There was no wrestling. So I was the only guy that when we would take 20, 30 kids around the country, I would be the only one that was like placing, winning national championships. I started competing at the highest level at 15. I wrestled my first world championship as a 15 year old kid. Fast forward nine years, Daniel had his first kid at 24. Inspired to be a great role model the same way his stepfather Percy was for him. I've dealt with some shit in my life, man. I lost my daughter back in 2003 in a car accident. I called the highway patrol. They told me uh, that there was an accident on the highway and uh, that three people were injured, but there was only one fatality and it was her. Just some guy being irresponsible, not paying attention. The baby's strapped in exactly as she's supposed to be. The guy bangs into the back of the car. She died at the scene. We barricaded in Colleen, Texas. I just remember her casket being so, so small. So small and just not understanding why stuff like that keeps happening. You gotta go through so much, and it's like in those moments, like, that's where you figure out who you are. When I lost my, my daughter, like, that same year, I made my first United States team. DC secured fourth place in Athens and came back as America's team captain for the following 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing. However, because of frequent weight cutting, he had to pull out last minute, and after having waited four years since the last Olympics, he wasn't even able to wrestle once. At the Olympics, my kidneys shut down, so I didn't get to wrestle my second Olympic Games. One year later, Daniel decided to start training MMA. Daniel Cormier believes that success all starts with the people around him. Myself, Velasquez, and Rockhold, all born, raised, formed inside the walls of AKA. When I first met Daniel, I mean, he was just a wrestler, that was it. Daniel Cormier is, is the biggest jokester in our gym. In the daylight, which you have to go, and tonight I want to hold you so close. You gotta know when to use it now. <laughs> Out! Luke Skyler Rockhold. 
quickly found out that get, getting kicked and punched makes it a lot harder to secure takedowns. We focus on our weaknesses and, uh, and what people did wrong in the day, and we, we, you know, we correct our mistakes. We're just more of a more of a family, more of a more of a group than everybody else. You know, everyone just kind of trains together. We we embrace each other. Everything I learned was learned inside that building, and not just me. Every guy. About a month later, I was fighting in my first fight. At 31 years of age, Daniel made his MMA debut in an organization called Strike Force. And despite Daniel being only 5 foot 11, he competed at heavyweight, making him one of the shortest athletes to fight in that division. To put this in perspective, here is a clip of him being pushed by Brock Lesnar. And here is DC pushing Brock. He continued to fight in strike force up until 2013 when it merged with the UFC. I do believe a star has been born in Daniel Cormier! Daniel Cormier eventually reached the top of the heavyweight division, soon to be expecting a title shot. He instead, however, decided to move down to light heavyweight. This was because his training partner and friend, Cain Velasquez, was the heavyweight champion. Daniel Cormier had taken himself to basically number two status in the heavyweight division. The guy that was number one, his teammate, his friend, Cain Velasquez. Those two simply were not going to fight. This is his division. I'm not going to fight Cain Velasquez. I'm not going to fight Luke Rockhold. It'll never happen. There was never a time, guys, that Cain Velasquez didn't show up for me. Despite Daniel's height, he was a natural heavyweight. This presented an issue and some doubt in the media whether DC would be okay cutting the extra pounds to move down a weight division given his previous kidney problems from doing a similar thing in the Olympics. And after a fight cancellation against Rashad Evans, he was set to make his light heavyweight debut against a former training partner who, unlike Cain Velasquez, did not deserve the same loyalty. Rashad Evans is injured and we thought the fight would be canceled. Yeah, I actually did cancel the fight. And I hear about this kid, Cummins. 40 different opponents have canceled fights on him. Daniel. When it comes down to it, we all know this fight has gotten incredibly personal for you. And claims that when he would train with Cormier, he would make Cormier cry. And that he quote unquote broke him. I know all Daniel's weaknesses. I know that I can push him and he will break. You need to be careful what you're saying, but things that happen in that wrestling room stay in the wrestling room. So not only have you crossed the line, you've completely put yourself in my crosshairs. Oh no, what have I done? You are completely in over your head, Patrick Cummins. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? MMA is crazy. Anything can happen. We'll find out next Saturday night. There were a lot of things going on in my life, and he knew that. So that's why I think that more than anything, those things should have stayed in the wrestling room. That's called payback. He treated that guy exactly the way he needed to treat him. He looked fantastic. The world is just basically, it's all his. I mean, he can decide whatever he wants to do. Um, Daniel's so gifted, you know, light heavyweight, heavyweight, it doesn't matter. I mean, the man can be competitive and be a champion wherever division he wants to go. John Jones! It's time for the UFC to have a new champion. I'm that guy. John Jones is not going to realize what it's like to have DC on top of him. He's never felt anything like that. Oh, yeah. And that's when it's going to get good. It's going to be intimate. <laughs> and passionate. And passionate. <laughs> I'm going to make him my wife. <laughs> that could never happen, I'm going to rub on that big old belly. <laughs> and you're going to like it. Yes, you will. It's gonna be right in your face. I'm gonna put it right in your face. I'm gonna take it on. Uh, I'm gonna smother you with my big old fat belly. <laughs> <laughs> and still. And the new. <laughs> we got Dana here today, so it's not gonna get too crazy. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. And I'm just gonna say something too, because he can't get the last word. Dana, you, Dana, you want to move out of the way for me for a second? What's that? 
Alright. Alright, big boy. If you can bring a dog fight to me, please do it. There's nothing you can do to stop me, Daniel Plumbing. Expect very malicious, violent things to happen. Hey, are you still there? I actually admire that you can actually be this fake. And like when the TV comes on, how you can just change. Thank you. You're the scum of the earth. You are a terrible human being, but you can sure turn it on. John, can you hear that, John? What are you thinking about when you walk through there? Just like I run. I always Saturday. ran. I never walked. And then they close that, that door. And there's like a pin. They drop that pin. I can still hear it. I'm sorry that I'm being classless right now. I do not like DC, and this is why I'm being this way. One thing that you cannot deny is that I outgrinded him. I outworked him. Simple as that. I outwrestled him. Honestly, you know, I, I know it's always nice to be a class act after a victory, but I really hope he's somewhere crying. You know, and I'm sure he is. I can't say enough about his his uh, grit and his determination. But you know, man, I've had to rebuild myself a number of times. Like people can't even imagine. And uh, this is no different. Um, this is not gonna. This is not gonna ruin me. You know, one way or the other, I'm gonna stand across the cage from that man again. And uh, I'll believe just as I did tonight. And I'll take the fight to him again. I guess. Breaking news just into Fox Sports One: The UFC has stripped John Jones of his light heavyweight title and suspended him indefinitely following his arrest in a hit and run crash here in Albuquerque. Dude, I wonder if this is that fighter's card. John Jones. Turning back to three and five to Well, he's fucked. He wanted to go down as one of the greats, greats, but or, or the greatest ever, and you know he's disappointed. That means Jones will not be defending the light heavyweight title next month at UFC's big event in Las Vegas. Police say Jones ran a red light at Wantabo and Southern Sunday, crashed into a car carrying a pregnant woman, then ran from the scene. He's facing a felony hit and run charge because the woman broke her arm. Police found a marijuana pipe and residue in the car, but he's not facing any sort of drug charges. Jones turned himself in yesterday evening and bonded out of jail shortly after. Because of John Jones's hit and run incident, Daniel Cormier and Anthony Johnson will now compete to become the new undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world. I'm just like, man, if you would have told me a couple years ago that I was going to fight Rumble Johnson for a championship, I'd say you may as well pack that belt up, send it to me right now. For the first time since 2011, a man other than John Jones will be called champion at 205. I don't have all the animosity built in. I can focus on the task at hand, which is beating Anthony Johnson. Last time I had all this frustration towards Jones and trying to fight him, this feels good. Jones just has different tools, of course a different style, and Omir is a grinder. I actually think he's tougher than John as far as styles for me. Anthony Johnson has bullied people. Tonight, he will not bully me inside of the octagon. I can knock him out at any moment. Whenever I want to, I can knock him out. He knows and everybody else knows that. Look, look this guy, look this guy, brother. Look, look, look this guy. Wow, and new undisputed UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, Daniel DC. He 
is your new light heavyweight champion, Daniel Cormier. Daniel, when you were taking photos just now, they said, okay, we'll do some smiling and not smiling. You said, I don't think I can stop smiling. What's going through your mind right now? I don't know. I just don't know. I still can't really comprehend. Oh, the Combinator. <laughs> Come on in and say hello to Daniel Cormier. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Fantastic job. Thank you. You trimmed down. I almost saw the six pack. <laughs> <laughs> that won't happen. All really fantastic. You guys should definitely address me as champ. I don't want you to call champ Cormier. Don't say Daniel. Okay. Don't say Daniel ever again. I'm so happy, guys. I'm sorry. Like, I, yeah, no, you I, like, guys, like, I mean, come on. Seriously. Like, I seriously won this thing. So I'm going to put it up in my TV room. Like, I seriously won. I, I, I won. That's crazy. Did you miss the spotlight at all? Did you miss, you know, the events and fight week? training camp like are you starting to long for that a little bit you know i would say uh, it, it was a weird night watching um daniel and anthony fight for my championship john jones's suspension only ended up lasting for six months and straight afterwards he began his hunt to reclaim the light heavyweight title scheduling a fight with daniel cormier straight away tuesday morning we get news john jones has been arrested he ends up staying behind bars getting locked up for 48 hours. You know, I know that you, you were drag I, racing, and I will testify to that. That I was not drag racing. Actually, you I do know that you were drag racing. both know that I did not speed. I'm sworn to protect the citizens from people like you, Mr. Jones. I feel the same way about you, sir. Once again, feelings mutual. On Thursday, Jones is released from jail, and we're told that the fight against Daniel Cormier is gonna remain. On Friday, news breaks that Cormier is injured and out of the fight. I was in practice sparring, and I kicked one of my partners uh, an inside low kick, and he checked it, and uh, I, I fell down. We get kicks checked all the time, and sometimes you bruise your shin, and you know a couple days it passes. I got up and started trying to spar again, and, and uh, another guy did like a little front kick to my shin, and when he did it, I fell on the ground again, and I was like, okay. This hurts a little bit more than, than normal, so I'm just going to probably stop sparring. So I went and got an x-ray, and they found that I had torn a ligament. On Saturday, we find out after you know some offers being thrown out to Anthony Johnson, to Rashad Evans, that UFC 197 is now going to be headlined by John Jones versus Ovin St. Pru for the interim light heavyweight title. That happened in the span of five days. What was your reaction when you found out that they were going with OSP as his opponent, that he was staying on the card? Do you think OSP has a shot? I think everybody has a shot, but, you know, I think there's a chance for Old Vince to have a better shot, but it's up to him to, to, to take it, you know, and that's why, uh, you know, we'll open our doors to him uh, to come and train at the American Kickboxing Academy. I don't what? care what... I don't care what happens in the future, <laughs> but I've got a guy named Cain Velasquez that can train with him. I've got a guy named Luke Rockhold that can train with him. We will take care of it. We'll fly Ovens and his team out here. We'll put him up, give him a place to stay. We want to give we want to give Ovens a chance, and uh, every guy on my team, uh, they're willing to play a part in that. So you are extending an invitation to the guy who is replacing you, fighting for the interim belt, who's fighting your rival, the guy who you said that you know you need to beat, you want to beat, all that stuff. You're extending an invitation to him to come to San Jose for the next three weeks or so to prepare for this fight, and you will help him out. I'll be I'll be one of his coaches. <laughs> Listen, I, I nobody wants to fight John Jones worse than I do. Right. So if I can live through events on April twenty third, I will live through events on April twenty third. But as I watch this, that is why the decision to plot this fight like this was so hard. Because I thought we would see a guy that may be a little rusty. And as I'm watching John, if I am being 100% honest, as I am, he does seem a little rusty. You can even see it on his face. He's not satisfied with the performance he put on tonight. And it's hard for me as a competitor to watch. Look at that. He's like, damn, he's staring at me, staring at me, staring at me. I'm doing my work. See, I'm just being a professional. There it is. There it is. <laughs> what? I mean, how rude, John. I'm going to see the doctor on Monday. If they say that Daniel Cormier is okay to compete, in 11 weeks at UFC 200, I'll be there. I'll be there with my championship belt, with my red wraps on my glove as I come out second, and you wait for me to walk to the octagon. We meet here, live, from the T-Mobile Arena, the brand new arena out here in Las Vegas, and we unify these titles. Don't bring that interim belt. You leave that at home. 
That shit, that's, that's garbage. That's a play belt. They got that thing from the kiosk upstairs before they gave it to you in the middle of the octagon. Leave that thing at home, John. Come chase this real title and get beaten. I'll ship you back to Albuquerque. So the UFC's most heated rivalry finally gets its rematch. Daniel Cormier defending his light heavyweight crown against the only man to defeat him in the octagon, former champion John Bones Jones. I think this is the most important fight in the history of the light heavyweight division. It might also be the most competitive matchup in the history of the light heavyweight division. And there's so much on the line. John Jones' legacy, DC's legacy. This was the most physically fit I was. I made the weight effectively. Everything was in place. I felt like my mind, my body, my life, everything felt in order. I lived with that defeat for a long time, having to rebuild myself, watching stuff over and over again. And I watched John parade around and say how he wished I was crying. All those things have propelled me to train harder, train smarter, be better as we approach the second fight. Okay, so you are trying to actually... It's it, become a positive. Yeah. It has to. It has to become a positive. The UFC organization was notified tonight that the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency has informed John Jones of a potential anti-doping policy violation, and therefore the fight has been removed from the fight card. But the guy's like 10 years younger than me. So every time he tested positive, they would suspend him for a year, but he's a kid. He's like 25 years old. You get a year off with all your money. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's only time, mm -hmm. right? It's only time. It's like... It's only time when you have all the time in the world. If I got suspended for a year at 38, now that's a real problem. Because I come back and I'm 39 years old. He comes back, he's 28 years old, 29 years old. Like, it was only time. What would a fighter have to do to step in last second against Cormier? What? Yeah. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to fight. You know, we're supposed to fight a guy people consider the greatest of all time. Now, we get to fight the other guy that people say might be the greatest of all time. How you doing? You good. Good. Yeah? good. Yeah. Hey man, you're fighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be a light heavyweight, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> such short notice give us your thoughts on the fight and how it went down the fight went how it had to go joe you know it's very difficult to switch opponents two days but anderson did a good job of staying in there were you a little surprised at how the fans here in vegas reacted to the fight or or at this point are you getting used to being booed people don't understand the situation that i've been in over the course of this last week so for me to go out there and get a victory over someone like anderson silva that's enough for me. Of course, I would have loved to have fought John again when I was 36, but the world works the way the world works. Mm. And our time is now. That one press conference, you know, when John first got back. And uh, I walk out there as the champion, and people said, you are not our champion. They booed you. They booed me terribly. And the reigning, defending, light heavyweight champion of the world. John Jones, uh, welcome back, of course. Hey, hey. What's up, guys? So glad to be back. Boo me, yes, that makes a lot of sense. But, um... <laughs> guys, I've been sober. I haven't done all these things. 
I haven't wrecked my vehicle. I haven't been suspended. I didn't get stripped for my championship. I didn't do all those things. Guys, these are normal things that adult human beings do. You cheer this guy for saying he's not going to do these things anymore. I have done this my entire life, but you boo me. I had no clue what he said over all those boos. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the last time I, I foot swept you, held my hand on your head like you're my bitch. Hey, what am I going to do? You're broke ass down. Hey, John, John, that, that, is, hey, that is your highlight. Hey. I slipped. I slipped that you hey. around. Hey. You know, right now, I'm, just, I'm a little more sarcastic because I'm okay with people disliking me. In your heart of hearts, do you truly believe that he has cheated and tried to get an, an advantage over you using illegal substances? Well, the other day, uh, John about cried on the press conference because I had accused him of using steroids. But if I do feel he did try to cheat, yeah, I do. Why can I not say what I feel? I can say whatever I want. If I believe it in my heart, then I will say it. And yes, I do believe he's done it for a long time. So, I don't care. <laughs> You've got a pretty loud voice there, buddy. Good job. <laughs> What made you cry in front of the world? Hey, that, that, that's passion. Been waiting for these cameras to stop. Shut the fuck up. Can't stand it. Just like this. This is Cain Velasquez. This is you. Hey, it's gonna be like... He work. was patting your back. Light word. I made a promise to my family and to my teammates that I would never put them through that again. My coaches. I'm not putting them through that again. I'm not putting them through the expectation of something so special and then to fall short and have to really pick me up and build me back up. Cormier checking the kicks very well right off the bat. DC looks so much more composed in this fight. Agreed. And DC is seeing everything is what I'm noticing. Bottom. Big punches landed by DC. DC, combination, starting with a kick, ending with a kick, finish mixing punches in between. I mean, it's a different Daniel Cormier right now with his combinations in this first round. Oh! A beautiful left hook and a right hand over the top by DC. DC just oozing confidence here. This is absolutely a different Daniel Cormier than their first fight. It's a good look for the judges when you're advancing, forcing the action. If you win both fights, there is no rivalry, so. I felt like we were very competitive over the course of the time that Jones and I spent in the octagon with him winning that second fight in that fashion. This was easily the worst night of my life. Like, I don't remember doing the interview. I don't remember, I literally don't remember from when he kicked me until I woke up, like I was in the ambulance and I was like, whoa, what the hell? I, had, I guess I had like a concussion, it was like, Probably seven to ten minutes that I, I will never regain in my life. And I felt sorry for letting the people that meant so much to me down. Zen Jones tested positive for performance-enhancing drugs. I go to Hawaii on vacation, and I start seeing Dana calling me, and he goes, where are you? I was like, I'm in Hawaii. I was like, I'm going, to, I'm on vacation. He goes, fuck. I go, what's up? He was like, Daniel, he was like, he tested positive again. And I go, so what does this mean? He goes, you're the champion. It was this crazy roller coaster of emotions. You know, I 
I knew I had lost the fight, and even to this day, I still say I lost the fight. I'm not one of those guys that makes excuses. I was in there. You know, I, I know I lost, you know, so I knew what I dealt with in the first title reign in terms of people saying I didn't beat Jones when I had held that belt for two years. And for two years, I had people telling me that I was not the real champion. I mean, I was like, I can only imagine what I'm gonna hear this time. They called me about fighting. I said, no, I said, I need a year off because I, I said I needed to give my brain some time to rest. DC later agrees to a light heavyweight title defense against Vulcan Ostermitt. I mean, he's a tough guy, but he's in over his head. This would be his final light heavyweight fight, as he would later vacate the belt and make the move up to heavyweight. What are you doing to just get yourself ready for heavyweight again? Eating? I think that Stipe and, uh, and, and Dan was a fun fight. The baddest man on the planet. The one who can beat any man on earth in a fight. That is one intimidating man. The UFC World Heavyweight Champion Stipe Miocic burned the baddest man Naira by annihilating opponents with ruthless efficiency. Wow! But Miocic's reign is under siege. Anyone that knows me knows that my fight camps are long, they're tough, they're, they're draining for not only me, but also my family. So when I get home on Monday and Dana's calling me, to go and coach the ultimate fighter, this isn't necessarily a conversation I want to have with my wife. He told me what he was going to pay me and everything, and he goes, I'll see you in Vegas on Wednesday. I said, well, I need to talk to my wife. He goes, I'll see you in Vegas on Wednesday. And yeah, I was in Vegas on Wednesday. This season of the ultimate fighter is different because you have two champions coaching teams, and then they're also going to fight at the end of the season. I love the fight against Stipe, and I love the ability and opportunity to coach against him. What's up, boys? Stipe, stand over there real quick. Let me just see. That's pretty, that's pretty frightening. DC, all-time great light heavyweight, but John Jones. DC, all-time great heavyweight, but Stipe. If I can get this done and I become only the second champ to hold two belts at the same time, it's gonna mean the world to me. He's a boxer and a wrestler. I'm a better wrestler, and I feel like I'm a better boxer, so. The better question is how Stipe Miocic is gonna beat me. If you get the job done on fight week, does that make you the GOAT? of UFC, that you have no drug issues, no outside the ring issues, and you have two belts. I have to be in the conversation. Everyone always says the next fight is their biggest, but right here, right now, do you think this is the biggest one of your career? Yeah, it's the biggest fight of my career. I'm fighting the most successful UFC heavyweight champion of all time, the baddest man on the planet. So nothing I've done to this point is bigger than this. We'll see you Friday. I was just embarrassed. I can't believe I fell down in front of all those people.
Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. My parents had to deal with the lowest of lows to the highest of highs. Fast forward a year and they got to experience a high that they could never have imagined. Then my parents watched me at wrestling matches all through high school and college. All the sacrifices, my dad working multiple jobs, my mom cleaning houses. They saw their boy do this amazing thing. I'm just happy that I was able to give that to him. Hey, Daniel, uh, were you surprised at all by the support out here from the from fans out here at the Garden? I said a long time ago, I told Daniel, if you're, if you're my champion for the rest of my career, I'm, 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 I'll be a very happy man. When's the guy going to walk in and, uh, and just look old, you know? And uh, it's not happening to him. When you fight a guy like Derek, I expect him to see a guy across from him that's a lot smaller than him. I think he's going to come at me and try to take me out. It's deceptive. I'm going to bang his ass up. Good luck to you, sir. Yeah, I, I, I was surprised at how easily he dominated him and did whatever he wanted to do. In the morning of the fight, I sneezed and I blew my back out. I didn't realize how bad it was. My back's jacked really bad. Like, that's how I knew it was kind of over. I should have stopped after I beat Derrick Lewis in New York City. Um, back stuff is weird. Once It seems like once things start going, it's like you, like a car. You know, once a ball joint blows out and the axle starts grinding, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's like a bunch of shit's going to go wrong. When I was going into the fight, my parents are normally right front row for the fight. And, you know, they weren't, so I called them before the fight and found out he was back in the hospital. I went back to my mom's. Uh, my father was just really sick. I got to spend like the following week of the fight with my father, and then um, uh, then the next week with my mom. You know, as we were preparing for the funeral, and it just really helped to put things in perspective. You know, when my time is over in this sport of mixed martial arts, I want people to remember me as a guy that fought hard every time I got in there. A guy that, although undersized, always gave it 110 percent and did this thing with class, with honor. And I wanna be a guy that people look back on and go, he was a role model, he was a leader. And he's the type of guy that I want my kids to try and mimic in sport and hopefully in life too. I'm not interested in fighting for anything but titles and I don't imagine there's gonna be a title in the future. So that'll be it for me. You know, I've had a long run. It's been great. I mean, I just fought my last fight for a heavyweight championship and. It was a pretty good fight. So It was a great fight. It was a great it's fight. Really nice. You've been a great champion, and you will without a doubt go down in history as one of the greatest combat sports athletes of all time.